Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Job is about to get into some comments on human mortality and uh, the fact that death comes to all of us. He continues um, with his response in kind of a negative flow, but interwoven with the negativity are some really faith-filled decrees that line up with principles we know from the New Testament that, um, of course, Job was never able to see. So let's read now Job chapter 14. Mortals born of woman are of but few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away. Like fleeting shadows, they do not endure. Will you fix your eyes on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are numbered, and you have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone until he has put his time in like a hired laborer. At least there's hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Yet, at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As the water of a lake dries up, or a riverbed becomes parched and dry, so he lies down and does not rise up, till the heavens are no more people will not awake or be roused from their sleep. If only you would hide me in the grave and conceal me until your anger has passed. If only you would set me a time and then remember me. If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag. You will cover over my sin. But as a mountain erodes and crumbles, and as a rock is moved from its place, as waters wear away stones and torrents wash away the soil, so you destroy a person's hope. You overpower them once for all, and they're gone. You change their countenance and send them away. If their children are honored, they do not know it. If their offspring are brought low, they don't see it. They feel but the pain of their own bodies and mourn only for themselves. And so Job observes that uh, mortality is very brief. Verse 1, mortals are born of a woman, are of few days and full of trouble. That statement, um, mortals are a few days and full of trouble. You may have heard that, but this is where it originates from. They spring up like flowers and wither away. Like fleeting shadows, they do not endure. And in terms, friends, of uh, the longevity of the earth and the eternal nature of God, our lifespans are just a breath. It's amazing how quickly our lives um, pass in comparison with those things like the universe, 15 billion years old, and then God knows how far beyond that he and others outside of our time and understanding have been in place. But our human lifespans are very brief. Job says, a person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. This agrees with the Psalms, friends, that our days are predetermined. And um, the Lord knows the end of our life from the beginning. Job asked the Lord to look away from him. In other words, um, don't, um, don't keep actively pursuing him. He compares man's life to the life of a tree, saying that the tree is able to regrow, but a man is not. Verse 7, at least there's hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. 
Yet at the scent of water it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As the water of a lake dries up or a riverbed becomes parched and dry, so he lies down and does not rise until the heavens are no more. People will not awake or be aroused from their sleep. And so, conversely, when the heavens are no more, people will awake and be aroused from their sleep. Uh, We believe from the New Testament that there's a new heaven and a new earth coming at the time of the resurrection. Once more, Job says that death is is basically preferable to the life that he's living. He says, um, if only you would hide me in the grave and conceal me until your anger has passed. If only you would set me a time and then remember me. Then he asked the question, if someone dies, will they live again? And I suppose everyone who's ever lived has had that question. But truthfully, friends, in Christ, we will live again. Job makes a faith decree after he asked that question. He says, I will wait for my renewal to come. And friends, there is a renewal coming. Those who know Jesus, those who love Jesus, those who depend on Jesus for their righteousness will be renewed and awakened and will live again. Job says, you will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag and you will cover over my sin. That is exactly what will happen in the fullness of time for those who have received the victorious life of Jesus as their own life of righteousness. Lord, we just recognize that Job in the midst of his pain and sorrow and suffering, somehow was given a glimpse of your plan of the ages, that the dead will be roused from their sleep, that we will be renewed in the times to come, that our sins will be covered, all because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, all because of the finished work of the cross, all because of the love that Jesus had for each of us and for mankind in general. Lord, we pray that we would not feel hopeless in times of sorrow and difficulty. Lord, for those that are listening that have lost hope, I pray once again, Lord, you would infuse them with a hope, not only of the resurrection to come, but of the glorious future we'll have with you for all eternity. I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.